How's it going everyone? Dr. Ben Hussein here and yes, you might notice that some things are a little different in this video and that is that it, the viewing angle is a lot wider uh, compared to when I first moved into my apartment making videos and that's because I hooked up my camera up right on top of my monitor to make it easier to edit uh, compared to when I was living in my old apartment. However, my old lens had me super, super cropped in, which made it really hard for me to actually gain some maneuverability and to kind of like show my hand gesturing with y'all. So I'm really glad I've been able to upgrade my camera lens and now I can crop videos into little reels format so I can kill a lot of birds with one stone. But let's get down to today's topic of interest and I think this is a super, super important thing that not a lot of people talk about because I feel like when we talk about health, when we talk about longevity, there is so much emphasis in younger people. And we don't talk a lot about how things like depression can affect older folks, especially older folks who have had a history of diabetes, heart disease, or have had a previous heart attack because a lot of people don't know this, but if you have a medical illness, a general medical illness, and you also have comorbid depression, older adults with depression and whatever underlying medical illnesses they have tend to do worse and have worse outcomes. And some of those worse outcomes is increased likelihood of death compared to people with the same medical illnesses as them without depression. And you might be wondering, wow, I didn't know depression has such an impact on older folks with things like coronary, coronary artery disease, congestive heart failures, strokes, type two diabetes can do far worse. And it's honestly very, very jarring. Um, studies as early as the 1980s have shown that in some illnesses, depression can be so significant that it increases someone's risk of death with a certain medical illness by as much as doubling it. Um, if you take coronary artery disease as an example, a study has shown that those with coronary artery disease and depression have a 20% increased risk of dying compared to the same um, group of people without depression. We see similar statistics when it comes to other illnesses that older f folks may experience, such as type 2 diabetes. Like I've said, diabetes is not something that's static. Usually when people get older, their diabetes gets harder and harder to manage, which comes with more and more complications from having long-standing diabetes. It can also affect people with strokes. Um, people with who have had a stroke and have depression that goes untreated are at increased risk of death within the next five years compared to those without it. So all of this is to say that we shouldn't take it lightly when we have a family member who's getting older, who's getting all of these medical illnesses diagnosed because that's just how the trajectory of life tends to be, also has depression. We shouldn't wave depression off because depression can be an, an influencing factor that basically alters someone's course in life living with a specific illness and whether or not they will keep on living. Another huge motivating factor on people's early death later in life or elderly folks are more likely to have increased number of falls when they have comorbid depression, which you might be thinking, what does falling have to do anything with, you know, getting more sicker and dying early? Unfortunately for elderly folks who are over the age of 65, it's actually one of the biggest contributors of early hospitalizations, early death. As that's why when you go to a primary care setting, you take grandma and grandpa to the doctor, they'll always say to get rid of anything on the floor, such as rugs that can lead to falls because elderly people have much more softer bones. They're more likely to have severe injury when they fall. If they hit their head, they're more at risk for intracranial bleed. So if an elderly person were to have comorbid depression, they have an increased risk of death due to falls and the complications of falling so it just makes sense to be very, very aware of people who have chronic illness, people who have debilitating illness to have their depression addressed and to treat it and not to just wave it off as like, oh, you're just depressed because you have chronic illness or you have this condition because yes, that may be true, but that doesn't mean that they should suffer alone and it doesn't mean that they should just deal with the fact that they should suffer because of their illness, at least mentally. I will say time and time and again, although that 
everyone gets older, everyone eventually develops some form of illness, everybody will eventually, I don't know if many people even think about it, especially if you're a young person, everybody will one day become disabled and live with a disability, whether we like to be aware of that or not. And that's why disability advocates have so much respect for me because they're very honest about living with disability, while many of us who lived able-bodied throughout, throughout most of our life have such a hard time coping with the fact that our bodies are not keeping up with our minds. But that doesn't mean that our minds should suffer and the outcomes of our mind suffering further deteriorating our health. Now, if, if you've gotten to this point of the video, you might be wondering, how does depression even contribute to early death among people who with comorbid medical illness, such as heart disease, such as heart failure, such as type 2 diabetes. And a lot of people have asked me that question, like, I don't get it. Like, depression, yeah, it, it sucks, but how does it really affect anything such as, like, my grandmother falling more often? And if you really, really look at the clinical diagnosis of depression, you'll actually be able to understand why it makes such a huge and significant impact. Because although mass media has started to talk more and more about depression, nobody really defines the criteria for depression, clinical depression, versus just feeling sad. The diagnosis of clinical depression, major depressive disorder, is actually very, very complex and usually requires a medical professional to diagnose you with major depressive disorder compared to just feeling sad, which most people nowadays call depression. So for major depressive disorder, you actually have to meet five specific criteria in at least the last two weeks to have that diagnosis. But I won't spare you the details of all the criteria, but I'm going to go over some of them so that you can understand why these symptoms can contribute to people not taking care of themselves and can contribute to early death. One of the huge factors when we also think about falls for elderly folks of major depression is something called psychomotor slowing, which means people get slower. They move slower throughout the, through the world where they usually, when they're not depressed, kind of act normal and like, like me, I'm very hyperactive most of the time and I use a lot of gestures, but if I were to go through a dep major depressive episode, you'll see me not be as interactive. I will probably have a more flat tone of affect. But in addition to this slowed behaviors, feeling so groggy, moving like you're in jelly throughout the world, some people, especially older folks, when they have clinical depression, also experience cognitive deficits. Cognitive deficits make someone feel like they're actually in some form of brain fog. They might forget things more. Sometimes depression is so bad among elderly folks, it gets confused for something like dementia. They start to forget things. They forget to do, uh, to leave, they leave the stove on and it might make them less aware of the world. So they're tripping on things more often. Another aspect of clinical depression includes a decreased appetite and decreased drive and decreased motivation to do things. So if you have coronary artery disease and you have to take medications every day, or you have to go see your doctor every now and then, or you need procedures every now and then, if you have clinical depression, you have less internal, internal drive to get things done in the day. If you also have the psychomotor slowing that I've talked about and also the cognitive decline, you're gonna forget your appointments, you're gonna forget to take your medications, you're gonna forget to get up in the day and actually do the things that you need to do like exercise to be able to take care of yourself and to prevent further decline of whatever medical illness that you have. So like, where do we go from here? How do we help people in our lives who are showing symptoms of depression and also have pretty significant chronic illness or has recently discovered that they have a new illness that they're having a hard time coping with. The thing we can do as their loved ones is to encourage them to seek help, encourage them to go to either a psychiatrist or therapist or just even their family medicine doctor. Talk about, you know, hey doc, I'm not taking my medications because I cannot get myself to get up in the morning and take them. I cannot even get up to go brush my teeth. I don't know what's going on with me. Something's going on in my head and I can't get through my day 
even doing the most simple task. Just encourage them, lessen the stigma of mental health, and don't try to be pushy. Let them go talk to their doctors about it, and maybe they can get a referral to see either a psychiatrist or a therapist to start that course of healing that they can give themselves the ease that they can give themselves so they can be more motivated to help themselves and to prioritize themselves and not care about what anybody else thinks. It's more easier said than done because living with a chronic illness, learning about a new cancer diagnosis, learning that you might not be moving the same way in the world that you used to can be incredibly mentally, mentally demanding and mentally hard to deal with. So that's why I always encourage if you feel like you cannot, you cannot do this yourself is to always reach out for help. And if you're that person who is watching someone else suffer, be that person who is their confidant. Anyways, that's it for this video. I think it's very important for me to talk about elderly folks and talk about people who are on the older spectrum of things on the internet because oftentimes they're forgotten. Only young people get most of the focus. I mean, I'm at that age where I'm like 27 years old and I feel like I am, I'm starting to become the boomer on the internet. But my goal has always been to raise the voices of people who are less talked about. And I feel like one of the biggest, biggest invisible populations, but also the biggest populations in the world are our elderly and are sick and are actively dying. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you gained something from this. I hope you like this new aspect ratio. I'm going to deck out the back and add more decorations and make my apartment look somewhat better for y'all <laughs> in future videos. But I hope you'll share this information with someone who may benefit from it. And I'll see y'all in the next one. This is Dr. Ben.